Hey guys, welcome to the fourth and final segment on how to spread a butterfly. What you've all been waiting for, we're going to unveil our butterfly and we're going to talk about some possible ways of displaying it. So I have my butterfly right here. It's been sitting for a week, which is a good long amount of time, so it should be completely dry. If you take it, the pins out after only a few days, it may not be ready and it's going to droop and flop and it's not going to be any good. So, I've taken all my pins out, I've removed my paper, now I'm just going to take my forceps, or if you just have your fingers, that's just fine, be really gentle, and here's my butterfly. So you can see that it is spread perfectly, even the little antennae are in the right spot. So, it's ready for display. Now, whatever I do to display this butterfly, it will stay forever. There's nothing that needs to be done to it. Don't spray anything on their wings, anything like that. It just needs to be kept in a cool, dry place. Um, it needs to be kept away from pests, and it needs to be kept out of direct sunlight or harsh lights. The lighting will fade it over time. So just pick a nice spot on your wall that has good lighting, nothing shining directly on it. Um, make sure you have a semi-airtight container or you can use some sort of fumigant and we'll get to that in a minute. Now as far as possible ways of displaying it, you have a few different options. Now the first thing I want to show you, it's really big, but bear with me. This is called a specimen drawer. Now this is a large wooden frame with styrofoam in the back and a glass top. The glass top comes off, of course, so you can put the specimens inside. So if you have this, you can take your butterfly, put a pin through the thorax, and pin it into the styrofoam. You can also pin in little labels or whatever, and there are some pros and cons. The good thing is that they're big. Um, you can put a lot of specimens in if you have a large collection, and they're pretty nice looking. They are heavy, they're bulky, and they are not cheap. They start at about $50 just depending on um, the, what it's made out of. So if you're interested in that, they can be purchased at bioquip.com. And if you have a really large collection, you can fill these drawers up, you can put them on your wall, or you can put store them in a, a cabinet that's made specially for them called a lane cabinet. Now, if you're looking for something a little less expensive, a little easier, uh, not so scientific, you can use what we call a Riker mount. Now these can be purchased probably at craft stores, but you might call ahead and ask, but you can definitely get them at several dealers online. And they're a really simple frame. It's got a glass top. It's got pins in the side. To open it, you would just remove the pins, take the lid off. The backing is a cotton wool. So you just basically take your butterfly, you just lay it on the, the cotton, you put the lid on, and it holds everything in place. And this will stay just like this as long as you leave it. And you can then hang this up or do whatever you want with it. Now there's another option, which is my favorite option. I like to make shadow boxes because you can make them really pretty. So if I'm going to make a shadow box, I don't use any extra pins or anything in my butterfly. I like to take a glue stick and cut about a half inch piece of it and glue my butterfly to it just like this. So it makes like a little stage for the butterfly. I like to use glue sticks because they are clear and you can't really see them once the butterfly is put is glued down in the shadow box. You can also use um, wooden dowels or something like that, but the glue sticks are really easy to cut and work with and as long as they're not heated, they work just fine. Now once you have your butterfly glued to its little stage, you can then glue it into the back of a shadow box. You can get shadow boxes almost anywhere. I get mine at Ikea. You can also get them at probably Walmart, Target, Texas Art Supply, other craft stores, pretty much anywhere. Um, you can be really simple, just one butterfly, a simple background, or you can experiment with different backgrounds. Um, you can put other insects in with the butterflies. You can use little dried flowers, whatever you want to do. So I have this one that I made with a couple of different butterflies and this nice beetle and flowery background. So you can get really creative. Now once you've displayed your butterfly, you might want to think about some pest control if you're worried about that type of thing. I don't usually ever have any problems, but you can purchase fumigant strips. You can use mothballs or you can use little cedar planks um, and to in, just insert them in whatever you're displaying your butterfly. And, and that should keep the pests away. Now, one final piece of advice before I send you into the world to spread your butterflies. 
be very patient and practice. If you have a beautiful, perfect specimen, don't start with that one because you might just destroy it. You might want to use some shabby, beat up butterflies to practice on before you get to that beautiful, perfect specimen. We do have them available, as I said in the first video, so you can contact us if you want to try to get your hands on some good practice butterflies. Now, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to comment on this blog or send us an email to blogadmin at hmns.org. I hope you've learned a lot from watching this series of short but informative videos, and thanks for watching. Have a great day.